All right, so here's going to be a quick reference for Numa projections and cyclohalkanes. So specifically, cyclohexane, cyclohexane. So whenever you do a Newman prediction, you look at you look down a bond, and it so happens that in cycloalkane or cyclohexane, there are parallel bonds. So if you look down one bond, you'll see the other bond in the same orientation, essentially. So I highlighted two bonds there, but we could have also said if we look down this bond, we'll see the other. We'll also be looking down the parallel bond of the one next to it. Or we could have said, <coughs> excuse me, that if we look down this bond, we look, we'll also be looking down that bond. And what that means is, well, let's just show you an example. So these two arrows show us where we're going to be looking. So if we're looking in this direction, we are looking up that bond, and we're looking up that bond. So first we'll look up this green bond, and we'll draw our new projection there. And next we'll look up the other green, the yellow bond, and we'll see a new projection there. And that's really the general concept. So now I'm going to show you kind of how to do that. That was an overview. So the first thing we do is we draw our one Newman projection, and in this case we would uh, assume that the front ring was going down, but we'll get into that in a second. But the, the legs are on the bottom in this case, so the one opposite, well we draw a circle, and the one opposite also should have its legs on the bottom. If you're not familiar with new projections, watch my other video. So we drew our two Newman projections. Now, since we know that these are parallel bonds, we can actually connect them, because they are all in one ring. And I'll show you what this means using the other representation of cyclohexane. But for now, you can know that they're connected, and that's what we basically do to connect them. So generally, or almost always, you're going to have one down, and then you're going to have one up. And the, the one up in this case is in the back, and the one down is in the front. And now we can have rotations, or as some like to call them, ring flips. And this is really what they look like in terms of new projections. Notice it's just going from one staggered to another staggered. And in the process, we have an eclipse in the middle, and then we have another staggered. So staggered, eclipsed, staggered. So what if we have a molecule? We need to assign where these things go in the molecule. So we look down our bonds. We're saying we're looking down those bonds. So the green would be that front dot carbon. And now the other green would be that dot carbon. So that again is there and then there. Now that one is one of the down legs on the front, and it's going to the left. And our, our eye, just so you're clear, is looking in that direction. And so we're seeing down that bond and that, and that bond at the same time. So this is in the down left. So this is in the down left. Up is an implied hydrogen. Down in the middle, connect. There's two connections, so this is actually a carbon with an OH. And we'll just put that there for now. It's kind of up, so we know this is in equ equatorial position, but now our implied hydrogen is down, so this is, you know, the equatorial there and the axial there, but I didn't really draw it straight. Anyways, now we move to that carbon, and we need to find what is pointing out, or in. So there's our one down leg, and there's the other down leg, and what it's asking for is to find the down leg pointing to the right. And then we just look at either that one, that's the left, or the right one, that's the right. So there we go. And if that's kind of clear to you, it might not be. Stare at it long enough and it will become clear. Up is a, an implied hydrogen again. Now we start doing the back carbon, so the one in green is going to be that carbon there. And the one in the other shade is going to be that back carbon, that circle. Now we have our two legs going up, so we'll look at the one going to the right, which is an OH. We'll get the leg going up to the right, we we'll put an OH there. Now we're going to look at the one going down, and we have nothing, so it must be an applied hydrogen. Now we go at the one, the leg going up to the left. And that's connected to an oxygen, but we, right now we have it connected to a carbon, so what do we do? Turn that to an oxygen. Now we're looking at that back green carbon. We've got two legs going up, one to the oxygen, which we've already drawn, and one up to a um, carbon connected to an OH, so we just do that. That's where it is, so put it there. And then looking down, we see nothing, so it must be an applied hydrogen. And that was fast, but hopefully this is just a reference for you. So what happens when we ring flip this? Notice all of our axial positions now became equatorial. 
So we can say this is axial, 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 axial in the back, axial in the back. Now watch where those go. So the one, the hydrogens are axial, watch where they go. They're now equatorial. And our previously equatorial group here, 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 and here have all become axial. Now this can't keep rotating because it's going to break a bond if it does that. So it's limited to these two rotations. And that's the new, mem that's new member projections for cyclic. So if we rotate only one bond, we make an eclipse structure. And this eclipse structure actually is the boat conformation. So you can see the difference between boat conformation and the chair conformation in terms of Newman projections. All it is is the chair conformation is the staggered and the boat is the eclipsed. So that again is the chair. Rotate one bond or one group and you get the boat.